Leading the crew is Joseph. My dad started the business in 1997. So it's been going now for 23 years. And when I finished school, I hopped straight in. I started off laboring for a year or two, then I moved up to traffic controlling, then I learned on the machine. So I slowly worked my way up the ranks, and now I'm allocating and managing. We've been contracted to demolish this whole building, this whole factory. This old factory covers 4,600 square metres. Not surprisingly, its roof is equally massive, comprising about 3,000 square metres of asbestos sheets. The team must first safely remove the asbestos sheets by hand, then bring in machinery to cut through and clear out the steel framework below. Internally, there are also old office spaces to be stripped out. The vast concrete floors will not go to waste. They're to be pulverised and recycled as fill for the new construction. The site is going to become a series of factory warehouse units. The team has six weeks to complete the demo. With the construction company already at the location, the pressure is on to get this hulk down quick. So as the demolition process is happening and the earthworks are happening, we're actually commencing our works at the back of the site. So we're sort of in sync to sort of move out with these guys as they come out with their demolition. We need the harnesses, we need the overalls. Today, the team is starting the removal of the hazardous asbestos roofing. It is a, a big job and a very dangerous job as well. We need to take care of safety on heights, safety by working in asbestos. It's a very dangerous trade and there's a lot of risks involved. So if you don't have someone, a supervisor like Bernard, a lot of things could happen. He's always got his eye out on things that could happen and preventing them. All right, uh, everyone suit up. Uh, we need our masks, obviously. We need our asbestos suits and harnesses are very important what's going on and working from heights. Another key ingredient to keeping everyone safe is inside this pump. We put that glue, we mix it with a, a bit of water to hold all the dust on the asbestos sheet. I have to look after them and make sure they're doing the right thing. No one will harm himself or do danger to others. Make it nice and tight. There we go. Yeah. Finally, they're topside. But there's already an issue. Only steep, brittle asbestos sheets stand between them and a perilous 15-metre drop with no anchor points in sight. I don't think by well, the agent's route that there's going to be any actual built-in anchor points. The team from Masters Civil are about to remove a dangerous roof from this factory in Condal Park. But first, they must find anchor points, as there's nothing but fragile asbestos between them and a perilous 15-metre drop to the factory floor. After a careful search, they're in business. As the team hooks up, Bernard starts spraying the roof with the glue and water mixture. It's not easy. It's the hard job, especially when the roof's on a, on a slope. The harness has a special um, lock, locking system where if a bit of pressure is put on it towards the back, it locks up straight away and the rope's attached to a heavy beam at the front. We start taking the edge of it. That's the hardest part because it's very close to the edge. It's very dangerous. A lot of these boys are eager to get in and just start smashing things, but that's not the way that we work in demolition. Menard teaches the boys takes care of them, makes sure everything's being done safely. Great heights aren't the only thing on Bernard's radar. Normally, if it is metal sheet, we can grind on it and just hook on the steel. But because it's asbestos, we have to take the asbestos out and then we can hook. So we can break it, we're going to make dust, and that dust is very dangerous. Smell it or sniff it. The sheets are starting to stack up, weighing about 40 kilos each. They can't stay up here long. Open a space. So later on, when I bring my manitou with the fork, so we can put all this on the manitou to drop it down.
We're cutting out the uh, the bracing that's holding the sprinkler line. The actual line has dropped. All the sprinkler lines are still charged. Now that there's an exit point, all the water is just gushing out of this. We're gonna call the plumber now. He will know. I think it is closed. Maybe it's gonna cut soon. Hopefully. It's just maybe the water inside these pipes, and this is the only point where the pressure was released. They put a tie wire on the pipe, so they didn't, they didn't hook it to the actual structure of the thing. They hook it to the mesh. So when we cut the mesh, it fall down, and because of the weight, it break. This demo's only just started. It is slowing us down. But a setback is a setback. Probably 200 litres, because at the beginning it was a lot of pressure, but if you look there, there is pipes all around this factory, and that's the only place where we break it. So all the water is going to go through that point. The cause of this mini waterfall? A broken fire sprinkler pipe. This is easy to fix. We already closed the water and the problem solved. It's a good thing uh, it's only a, a broken pipe, not a broken arm. The workflow upstairs can now get back on track. 3,000 square metres of asbestos roofing's got to come down safely before the machines can start ripping out the steel framework below. Done about 1,000 screws, but they probably have about 100,000 more to go. Massive job, massive job. And this is just the first bay. There are seven more to go, and the demo clock, as always, is ticking. Fast forward two weeks, and the hazardous roof's been peeled off. So M. Bernard's loading it. He's got to have the forks in the centre of the asbestos, otherwise it can fall over and break. The inside of the truck has to be wrapped as well. It's got to be double layered with plastic. It's more for the safety of everyone. We do at least one asbestos job a week, so we know what we're doing.